Beneath the turquoise waves of the Western Pacific, hidden among dense mangrove forests and surrounded by the relentless surge of ocean tides, lies a city unlike any other in human history. A sprawling labyrinth of basalt walls, tidal canals, and mysterious ruins known as Nan Matal. Situated just off the eastern shore of Pohnpei Island in Micronesia, this ancient stone city has baffled explorers, archaeologists, and engineers for centuries, earning the haunting moniker, Venice of the Pacific. Yet, as we journey deeper into its shadowy corridors, we discover a riddle far greater than mere comparison, a technological enigma that challenges everything we thought we knew about the capabilities of ancient Pacific Islanders. Nanmadol is no ordinary ruin. Stretching across nearly 200 acres, it consists of 92 artificial islands, each meticulously constructed atop coral reefs and tidal flats. These islands are not natural formations, but feats of human ingenuity. Raised platforms of basalt columns, some weighing as much as 50 tons each, stacked like giant logs with astonishing precision. The islands are interconnected by a web of canals, navigable even today, forming a network that once teemed with life, ritual, and the pulse of an ancient civilization. But the secrets of how and why Nan Madal was built, and most importantly, how its creators managed to transport and position such colossal stones, remain lost in the mist of history. To begin to unravel the mystery, we must first step back in time. Most estimates place the construction of Nan Madal between the 12th and 16th centuries CE, a period when great empires flourished in Asia and the Americas, yet the Pacific remained a world apart its islands scattered like jewels across thousands of miles of open sea. The islanders of Pohnpei, known as the Saudelur dynasty, ruled from this improbable stone city, enforcing strict authority over their people and orchestrating elaborate religious ceremonies within its walls. But unlike the monumental architecture of Egypt or Mesopotamia, Nan Madal was built on water, its foundations anchored in shifting tidal flats that would challenge even modern engineers. The stones themselves are the first shock. Basalt, a volcanic rock formed deep within the earth, is not native to the exact location of Nan Madol. The closest quarries lie miles away, across rugged terrain and thick jungle, separated by rivers and swamps. The largest stones, some over five meters in length and weighing dozens of tons, would have been nearly impossible to move with the technology known to exist at the time. There are no wheels, no beasts of burden, and no evidence of advanced lifting machinery. The sheer logistics of quarrying, transporting, and stacking these stones defy conventional explanation. Local legend attempts to fill this void with magic. The oral histories of Pohnpei speak of two brothers, Olosopa and Olisipa, who arrived from a distant land using sorcery to levitate the mighty stones across the landscape. While the stories shimmer with myth and wonder, they hint at something deeper, a recognition that the means of construction were so extraordinary, so beyond ordinary experience, that only supernatural forces could explain them. Yet the reality may be even more mysterious. Recent investigations suggest that the builders of Nan Madal possessed knowledge of engineering and logistics far ahead of their time. Some researchers propose the use of clever techniques, rafts fashioned from palm trunks, sophisticated sledges, or tidal manipulation to float the stones during high water. Others point to a possible lost technology, now vanished from the archaeological record, that allowed the islanders to harness the unique properties of their environment. But every theory bumps up against the same barrier, the sheer scale and precision of Nan Madal's stonework. Imagine, for a moment, the process. The basalt columns, quarried from distant slopes, are shaped and selected for their hexagonal regularity. They are transported across marshes and rivers, somehow kept intact despite their immense weight. Upon arrival at the tidal flats, the stones must be stacked atop coral and sand, forming stable platforms that will not sink or collapse under the relentless force of the sea. Each wall is assembled without mortar, the stones fitted so snugly that centuries of storms have failed to break their grip. Some structures rise to heights of eight meters, enclosing courtyards, tombs, and sacred spaces that suggest a purpose far more complex than mere shelter. The challenges are not just physical. Nan Madal represents an organizational feat equally staggering, a society capable of mobilizing hundreds, perhaps thousands of workers, 
coordinating the transport and assembly of materials, and sustaining the enterprise over generations. The city's layout, with its ceremonial centers, residential zones, and ritual platforms, speaks to a sophisticated understanding of urban planning and social hierarchy. It is a place built for power, mystery, and ritual, its very stones infused with the memory of vanished rulers and forgotten ceremonies. As we probe deeper, the mysteries multiply. Radiocarbon dating and archaeological excavations reveal layers of occupation stretching back centuries, suggesting that Nan Matl was not built in a single burst, but evolved over time. Its islands added and expanded in response to changing needs and ambitions. Yet, the techniques used to lift and position the largest stones remain elusive. No tools have been found, no written records survive, and the oral traditions, while evocative, offer only fragments of truth. Some investigators have compared Nan Madol to other ancient engineering marvels, the Moai of Easter Island, the pyramids of Egypt, the megalithic temples of Malta. In each case, humanity confronted the boundaries of its knowledge and pushed beyond, leaving behind monuments that seemed to defy possibility. But Nan Madol is unique in its aquatic setting, its reliance on massive basalt, and its complex network of artificial islands. It is a city built not just against the elements, but in harmony with them, its canals serving both as transportation routes and as a bulwark against the encroaching sea. Could there be a lost technology, now forgotten, that enabled the builders of Nan Madol to achieve the impossible? Some archaeologists speculate about the use of coconut fiber ropes, ingenious counterweights, or even the exploitation of natural buoyancy in the tidal flats. Others suggest that the builders may have possessed an intuitive understanding of physics and material science, now obscured by the passage of time. What is clear is that Nan Madol challenges the assumption that technological progress is always linear, always advancing in neat, predictable steps. Instead, Nan Madol points to a more complex reality, a world in which ancient civilizations possessed extraordinary knowledge, adapted to their environment in ways that modern observers still struggle to comprehend. The city's silent stones bear witness to a legacy of innovation and ambition, a testament to the capacity of human ingenuity to transcend the limitations of time and place. Today, Nan Madel stands as a monument to mystery, its walls slowly succumbing to the relentless advance of the jungle and the sea. Yet, with each new discovery, each stone unearthed, each legend retold, we move closer to unraveling its secrets. The story of Nan Madel is not just the story of a lost city, but of a lost chapter in human history. A chapter that reminds us that the boundaries of possibility are always shifting, always open to those willing to dream, to experiment, and to defy the ordinary. As we gaze across the tidal flats, watching the sun dip below the horizon and the shadows gather among the ancient walls, we are left with a single tantalizing question. Who were the builders of Nan Madel? And what forgotten technologies did they wield to raise their city from the sea? The answer, hidden in the basalt and coral, awaits those bold enough to seek it.